There's Malcolm. He's a genius. Who? Malcolm. Where do you think that came from? Then there's Malcolm's dad. Honestly, Hal, you're like a monkey. Arms up. Two. And Malcolm's mom. You've always been the best one. Best one. The best one. Not to mention Malcolm's brothers, Dewey. Ow, ow. Reese. Open. Swish. And Francis. Give me another chance, which I admit I don't deserve. Which leaves Malcolm in the middle. Closer to the wall! Mom, seriously, it reeks over here. I can't help it. Malcolm in the Middle, premiering next Sunday after The Simpsons at 8 37 30 Central on Fox. Tonight, kick back and let Fox entertain you on the first Sunday of the millennium. King of the Hill is followed by an hour special of The Simpsons. Then watch a bizarre alien encounter on The X-Files. Tonight on Fox at 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. McNown on first down, out of the gun, hooks up with Ryan Wetnight for a game at eight easy, yards. Easy, easy. Derek Brooks makes the tackle. Right now, let's go for a green game break. Here's JB. Ray and Ron, don't tell me these guys don't know what they have to do. Jory C. Levins, what does he do? His third touchdown round today. Green Bay, 35-10 over Arizona, while the Panthers, boy, they know they have to run the scoreboard up as well. Back to Ray and Ron. Thank you, JB. On second and short, Cade McNown picks up a first down in the Bucks territory to the 43-yard line as... The Bears refuse to go away. Tampa Bay in control here, a two touchdown lead. 6.46 left. Tampa Bay with everything at stake here today, Ron. A win, and they get the NFC Central title, their first in 18 years. They also the bye. clinch the, the bye, the home field advantage for the at least the, the divisional game. playoff game. Right. And it's all good for them, but I tell you, these Bears aren't going away. Down. Now he dumps it out to Allen. Allen hit by John Lynch up to the 35 yard line, eight more yards. And also, too, Monty Kiffin, the defensive coordinator for the Bucks, he's backed his guys off here. Yeah, they're up 26, they're up pretty comfortable, six minutes and running. You want to avoid the big score right, right now. That's number one. They're going to give them the dink and dunk and the bleeders. They want to just get off the field if they can with any scores, but if they're going to allow a score, make it a slow one, use up some time, and then put their offense back on the field, and you know you're going to see two tight ends and Mike all stop. James Allen, That's great play there. Hurt by Nickerson. He'll lose yardage. You know, something else that this Bucks team did in the offseason, and not only have they been together and they have that great chemistry, <laughs> They, they hit a lot more in training camp. And you see these guys flying around, and they will all tag you. They will all put chips in your helmet. And you don't just get that by drafts. You have to develop it. Everybody's got to trust everybody. Everybody's got to know where each player fits. Third and four. Blitz. Bears 0 for 8 on third down. Now 0 for 9 incomplete. Looking for Marty Booker. And Chicago will more than likely go for this one as Bobby Ingram comes out of the field, and you, that's what they'll do. You definitely got to go for it. You know, those two big runs by uh, Warwick Dunn on the series before that put the Bucks up here, that, that was huge. He, he really had the runs that set everything up and then allowed for, you know, later on the Mike Allstott run. You'll see some more of that when they get back on the field, I'm sure. Fourth and four. And down. And he got oh, the snap. He's got it if he goes for it on the run, and he gets the first down. John Lynch makes the stop. Yeah, Lynch was going to come down and blow him up, but he gave Lynch just enough of a little hip shake to keep him off balance. Well, sometimes things go good when they go bad or start off bad. Drops the ball. He's forced to run. Who knows what would happen if he stayed in the pocket? <laughs> Might have threw an interception. Or interception, right. Instead, Might have been the best thing that ever happened to him. He runs and gets that first down, does McNown. First and 10 at the 31. McNown dumps it out and complete to Ryan Wetnight. You see a little McNown's moving back and forth and 
He's got a little of that Brett Favre in him. That, that's one of the things that the Bears wanted out of their quarterback. You know, he's got a long ways to go in terms of development, but every now and then you'll see something pop out that's good. And the Bears aren't quite in a hurry-up mode, but they are picking the tempo up a little bit with just over four minutes left, second and one. Dropped by Wet Knight. John Lynch makes the play. The coverage to Lynch. The Bears have third and one. You can kind of feel, look at the, the Buccaneer sidelines, you can kind of feel them saying, hey, get off the field, and the game's ours. Shut them down, get off the field. We can go into our run mode, and the game is ours. Not only would the game be theirs, but the a whole lot, a whole lot more. Championship, a, a right. buy in the playoffs, and they'll even get some new hardware for the Bucks facility. <laughs> the down bounces it off the umpire, incomplete. Bring up another fourth down, intended for James Allen. I was talking about that hardware. We were talking with the Buccaneers. Brad Culpepper, and he says, you know, we've got two old, rusty, rusty nasty, nasty looking plaques. Signs, one from 79, one from 81, championship plaques in the facility. They're looking to put something nice and new up on that That's wall. That's right. <laughs> There's the umpire, Ed Kukart. Ed Kukart making the, uh, give him a pass broken up in the Bucks stat. Oh, sheet, and now there's a flag down. Did they have lingering? They have too many men in the huddle? I don't know what happened there. Offense, illegal substitution, 12 men in the huddle. A five yard penalty remains fourth down. Boy, that's a, that's, a, that's a heck of a rule to get caught on a fourth and one. They call for lingering. You're not allowed to have more than 11 in the huddle at any one time. It's a form of an illegal substitution. But the, the, the Bears are arguing that that wasn't the case. Oh, Ingram, see, Ingram just kind of walked off the sideline, I guess. So now he's going to go argue Which he that. can't do. He's got to come all the way inside the numbers and then walk back out. Yeah, he's got to get in there inside the numbers. Now, that was the only, the second penalty of the day on Chicago, but it makes it fourth down and six. And now Tampa Bay takes a timeout. Well, that was strange. <laughs> Tampa Bay is totally out of timeouts here in the second half. This looks like Ingram coming off. Okay. But then they realize they don't have 11 on, but he stops. He can do that. Yeah, well, that's remember the old sleeper play where you act like yeah. you're going out of bounds and then line up on the end. We're looking for the sleeper. We'll be back in just a moment. Never give up. Never surrender. They've spent years pretending to be heroes. How did I come to this? By the Sons of Warband. I played Richard the Third. Now they have no choice. We need your help. But to become heroes. We gotta get out of here. Move the ship. There's nothing you say will make me. The show must go on. Mom is the word. Mom. 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 Galaxy Quest is the funniest, wittiest comedy of the year. Galaxy Quest, rated PG. Now playing everywhere. We've got a couple of nice SUVs, a new convertible, some minivans. The crooks hide the cars behind boxes and smuggle them out of the country. You can be out here all day and not find one. One day we've got 17. By making it hard for car thieves to do business, we're making it cheaper for you to do business with us. You're in good hands with Allstate. Mine. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. You wish you had a camera now, don't you? A digital camera. It's a simple way to send photos on the internet. 640 by 480 resolution is fine for website. But for larger formats, a million pixels is a good benchmark. If learning about digital cameras were this easy, you wouldn't need a place like 800.com. But it isn't, so you do. 800.com, everything you always wanted from an electronics store and more. Get ready for a three-night greed fest. Do you feel the need for greed? Greed fest. The three-night game show event starts at 9, 8 Central Fox Wednesday.
Fourth down and six for Cade McNown and the Bears. Their last gasp with 3.52 left. McNown hit as he throws incomplete. John Lynch. <laughs> I don't know if it was intended to Lynch or not, but let the celebration begin for Tampa Bay. <laughs> That was as intended for Lynch as it was anybody yeah. in a dark blue jersey. Let's put it like that. Well, they had great pressure on Cade McNown. And really, they got worked on that play before. I don't understand that one at all. Because now here's a pressure, as always. When you can get pressure with just four guys like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers can do, that makes you a great defense. You know, we can talk about Lynch and we can talk about the linebackers, but the front four dominate and they set the pace, the tempo for everybody else on that defense too. Chidi Ahanatu is the man who had the hit on McNown as Tampa Bay goes into that run mode with Allstott. He'll pick up a couple of yards. And as always, Allstott on first down hasn't been much today. And the Bears use a timeout. They have two left. You know a guy who's been good for this team for the Bucks today? Stan White. Stephen White, excuse me. Number 94. He had some big plays earlier. Had Been around the quarterback. Broke up a couple of screen plays. Mm -hmm. Playing outstanding. And, and the Bucs with the win here will get that bye week of the first round of the playoffs. And that'll give them some time to get healthy as they have lost a couple of key men along that front line. Culpepper on that defensive line and Gruber, the offensive left tackle. These injuries really won't matter because they won't be in the playoff pitcher, but they got a long time to <laughs> heal. <laughs> for Tampa Bay, those two guys, that does matter. Especially Gruber. Now, there are no real big beasts as far as those right ends that they're going to see in the playoffs, but still, you want your left tackle situation as solid as any, situ as any position on the field. All stop picks up another yard and the Bears burn their second timeout. And the second longest drought is over. It's the Buccaneers, their last division title came in 1981. So the uh, Rams won their division, so that one's over. The Colts won their division, that one's over. Seahawks still got Seahawks one going. Seahawks may have won it as well, so the Cardinals are all alone on that deal. The Cardinals might be all alone for a while, too. They had a, quite a disappointment out there this year. Jake Plummer didn't really show up. Tony Nathan there. Shooting his stuff a little bit with Warren Sapp. Third and seven, the Bears can stop the clock one more time. King hands to Allstott. Mike Allstott picking his way up to the 34 yard line. Bears are going to get the ball back. Bears will take that final timeout. The race in the West. See Oakland ahead of Kansas City, 35 to 31. And the Jets over Seattle. And, and both teams with a chance to go out there and grab that thing <laughs> aren't doing it. I guess that's why I said that was the best deal Miami's had all year. All they had to do is sit back. It didn't matter what they did. Yeah, no, if, if these scores stay, if both teams lose, then Seattle would win the West by virtue of their two wins over the Chiefs. Uh -huh. And Miami, uh, doing nothing, well, actually, they we'll did to, do something. They had a nice start to the season. But they will the make the playoffs based on the outcome of those two games. Fourth down and two. Royals will punt again. Line drive kick into the wind. Milburn at the 30. The coverage units from the Bucks have been great all day. That's McLaughlin who makes that special teams play. A 35-yard punt, a seven-yard return. The Bears will get another shot. But right now, I'd like to thank our crew this year on cameras. Michael Rattuz and Wynn Bernfeld have done an excellent job. Our audio guys, Win, Paul Win, Kelly, Win. PK. <laughs> we have Gene Richards, videotape Mike Norris and Randy Carr. Video room, Mark Laffer. 
graphics Joe Flynn doing a wonderful job technical director Rick Tugman and the old guy our technical producer Dan Rotante wonderful job all year fellas. I don't think he got the second foot down. I think Marty Booker got just one foot in. Man, officials agree with me. Now, I don't think McNown fully has these big receivers gauged. You know, how fast they're actually running. Because you see too many balls just, just out of bounds. Rough day for Cade McNown. 16 of 32 for 136 yards. One interception. This one's knocked away by Barber. Well, look at that pressure. He, he, that's the front four I'm talking about. It just looks like a white wall of shirts just coming up the field and jumping all over Cade McNabb. The Warren Sapp, well, he actually lost some weight this year. He was so upset about the way things went last year. Felt he didn't play his best football. And he was bent on coming back and showing that he was a great football player. McNown throws it outside and it's intercepted. Now oh, drop. Yeah. Boy, Abraham almost had his second pick of the day, but he couldn't hang on to it. That's a case where they get to fighting over the football. Yeah, or him and Robinson both wanted it. I've been there. Hey, those those, uh, those marshmallows go up like that. You got to get your stats going. This is the last game of the season. You might have an incentive in the contract that's worth a couple a couple grand here and there. There are four minutes left in the Minnesota Detroit game. Time permitting, we will send you up to Minnesota for the finish of that game. Fourth and ten here, and Bears will go for it. Now with pressure, throws downfield, incomplete. Clock stops with 2:56 left. The Bears have no more timeouts, and they have to hand it over on downs to Tampa Bay. Ray, I think it's going to be a, a real interesting playoff series because you know, the Rams, yeah, they've had the great year, and they will have home field, and they'll be at home. You know, for all their games, but I think it's going to be a team like a Tampa Bay, somebody who maybe has started off not real great, but is playing great football later on. It's got a good defense, a great defense that can go down there and upset them. That's what it's going to take. And I also think it's going to take somebody who's got a quarterback who's playing well. It's going to be loud, you know, the communication, all that stuff's going to be a problem. All stop for a couple up the middle, but let's look at the NFC playoff picture as it starts to come into better view. We give Tampa Bay the win here today, so they would get the number two seed, and they would have that first week of the playoffs off, off. with a bye, and then Washington would win the East. Minnesota winning, they would go to 10 and 6. Now, if Dallas wins later on today, they would actually move into the number five seed ahead of Detroit. If Detroit loses to Minnesota, now if Detroit wins that game, they'll keep that number four seed. And of course, also the flip side of what I'm talking about is that, you know, in that first game, I think Tampa Bay is going to see somebody comparable to them that can beat them. That's going to be very good. Someone who struggled early, but is playing great football down the home stretch. That takes us to the two-minute warning here in Chicago with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Going to win that Central Division title. They have a 20 to 6 lead over Chicago. Malcolm Blazier, a happy man on the sidelines. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Foster, Australian for beer. How to speak Australian. Wake up call. Beer. Foster's Australian for beer. Speed news. My honey barbecue wings are back. 
Got a new sandwich, too. Now get your KFC Honey Barbecue two ways. Wings or in the new Honey Barbecue Sandwich. Each just $1.99. Introducing the all-new Hyundai Accent. It gives you a serious array of responsible features without losing its wild side. The 2000 Accent from Hyundai with the freedom of America's best warranty. Hi, I'm Robert Brooks, wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. When I take the Lambo lead, I know the fans will support me. But some people need more help, and that's where the United Way comes in. Here in Green Bay and across the country, there are women and children who are battered and abused, and they need a place to keep them safe from domestic violence. That's why I'm joining with many NFL players, our fans, and the United Way contributors to help stop domestic violence. Together, the NFL and the United Way are building better communities for all of us. Three cheers for the new year. He's gotten into the pep closet. I say he's coming out of the pep closet. <laughs> A special full hour of The Simpsons tonight at 8, 7 central on Fox. While we're away, Mike Allstott trips up. No gain on the play. As the Bears can't stop the clock anymore. Right now, let's head up to Minnesota, see what's going on be between Detroit and the Vikings. Ray and Ron, it's nonstop in Detroit as well. Gus Farad in for the injured Charlie Batch. What does he do? He finds Johnny Morton at the back of the end zone. It is now 24-17 Minnesota. Time permitting, we'll take you there. Back to Ray and Ron. Right you are, JB. As soon as this one's over, if we have a chance, we will send you up to Minnesota to see the conclusion of that game. Fourth down, all stop, loses yardage. The clock stops with a minute and 11 left. Chicago Bears will get one more shot on offense. Yet one more shot at this thing. With no timeouts and needing to score a couple of touchdowns to try and force overtime, likely. Uh, I think it's been such a such a tribute to Tony Dungy, you know, for sticking with what he believes in and doing it his way you know, the team was three and four there was a lot of finger point going on you know how that goes everybody wants that uh, wants the the, the the ship turned around and going the right direction he stuck with what he believes in and that thing is turned around and they're heading in the right direction Marcus Robinson turns around and heads in the right direction 30 yards on the play, the biggest play of the day for the Bears. I think the defense, they, they kind of sat on the sidelines there, kind of thinking, you know, let's get ready to put the celebration hats on. You can see that's exactly what Tony's thinking, too. And I don't think they realized they had to go back out there. They weren't counting on that. Yeah, sometimes you get guys over there and they're taking tape off. Oh, yeah, get stuff done. Up. Spats are off. Shoulder pads unhitched. <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, you know what? Defense... There's a flag down on this one. Ingram makes the catch. Chicago trying to finish on a high note here. You know, it's key. One advantage, a big advantage for Tampa Bay of having this bye week. Defense, number 78, lined up in the neutral zone. The penalties decline. The big advantage of having that bye week, this will give him a chance to diagnose Paul Gruber and see exactly what he's got. You, you don't know. I mean, he may he may have a chance to come back with that week off. Strained a knee earlier in the game, did Gruber. Same with Culpepper. He needs that rest. Now, I don't know if we're going to get out of this one too quick here. Yeah, don't rule him out yet. Kate McNown. Hits Robinson again. He's inside the five to the four yard line. The clock hits the 30 second mark. Yeah, can't, and Chicago can't stop it. They can stop it by downing it, clocking the ball, and that's what McNown whoa, whoa, does. Uh, that <laughs> double, was, he double clutched on the old clock move. That was very close to becoming a incomplete, incomplete pass. Or, or a, 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 a lateral, a backward pass. Or a fumble lateral, yeah. Confusion at the end. 
Today's game is being produced by Pete Macheska, directed by Michael Frank. The associate director is Barry Landis. The broadcast associate, Eric Billigmeyer. Technical producer, Dan Rotante. Studio show produced by Scott Eggerson, directed by Bob Levy. The associate director, Jennifer Love. Bill Brown, the senior producer of Fox Sports. Ed Gorn and David Hill, the executive producers. As it's incomplete on third, intended for Marcus Robinson. Stops the clock with 18 seconds left. Fourth down, Bears. Yeah, we were just talking with it. They, uh, you know, Bears need a quick score here and then hope for an onside kick. That's a lot that's got to happen that's with no thin. timeouts. That's, that's thin. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, there is still a chance. Yeah. But it's a thin one. Incomplete, and now it's over. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are the 1999 NFC Central Division champions. 1981, you have to and go I think back they're going to break out the celebration hats, the you championship bet. hats. And they'll have something nice, a nice new plaque for the wall back home. That's right. Brad Culpepper will be happy. There they and go. you know the amazing thing about it is the weather, they brought the, the weather up here with them. Very nice. They almost hit a record for warm temperatures today. It was a couple degrees below it. Saying earlier, it's Joe Marciano, the special teams coach, he's getting and Quarles beat up on. The, usually, you get the Gatorade dumped on you. Quarles <laughs> hit him in the back of the head with the Gatorade <laughs> bottle. Monty you know, Kiffin and Warren Sapp. A new celebration. Final snap of the game, and Sean King runs his record to four and five as the starting quarterback for Tampa Bay. They finish the regular season 11 and five. They get a bye in the first round of the playoffs. They have the second best record in the NFC. And they win today 20 to six. Tony Dungy's team over Chicago. Thank everybody for watching today. Ray Bentley along with Ron Pitts saying. So long from Soldier Field in Chicago. The final score, Tampa Bay 20, Chicago 6. We have bonus coverage coming up. Detroit and Minnesota. Right now, let's join Pat Summerall and John Madden for the conclusion of that game. Tampa Bay has beaten Chicago. So they're the NFC champions. Minnesota is beating Detroit 24-17. Turnovers. Minnesota three, Detroit two. Minnesota got seven points, however, off the turnover. Off the turnover. Charlie Batch was hurt earlier, and Gus Perot has been the Detroit quarterback. Robert Smith hangs on and fights for extra yardage. Second half scoring here in this contest. Leroy Horde. And Gus Farad to Johnny Morton to bring it to 24-17. The last touchdown by both teams. Third and seven. Yeah, Detroit's going to get the ball back, but they're not going to have much time because there is one more timeout left here, and that'll be the change of possession. If they can if they can stop him here, then Minnesota's going to have to punt. And when Detroit gets the ball back, that will stop the clock. Third and seven. Chris Carter on the move to the left. And the handoff is to Smith. And Smith gets the first down, and it's academic. It's all academic now. Stephen Boyd made the tackle. Tampa Bay wins the NFC Central. The Buccaneers get a first round bye, and the winner of today's game, which looks like Minnesota, will play next week right here. And then Detroit is also, even though they've lost, if they lose now, they've lost four in a row, they're still in the playoff, right. and they will play a game, a wild card game next week on the road. 24-17. Today's game is being produced by Bob Stinner, directed by Sandy Grossman. Associate Director, Mike Roy, the broadcast associates, Charles McDonald and Mark Mata. Technical producer Bob Muller. The pregame show is produced by Scott Ackerson and directed by Bob Levy. Senior producers Bill Brown. The executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. And all 
Charlie can do is watch. You know, it'll be interesting next week if Charlie Batch will be able to play. He has a broken thumb. He re injured it in this game. Dennis Green has to feel good about his team because I've always felt that you want to be peaking going into the playoffs. And, and I think that the, the Vikings 